This is it, the course Mechanical Vibration. We are covering this presentation response to a general non-periodic force using the superposition method. My name is Carmen Miller Carger. This is part of chapter number four of our text regarding the response to general non-periodic forces. For small displacements and linear system, the excitation torque can be decomposed into a sum of functions, and the response will be the sum of the responses of each of these functions. In this image, we see here that the response for force 1 will be x1, the response for f2 will be x2, the response for f3 will be x3, and so forth. As an example, we want to find the response to a rectangular pulse load using the superposition method. The governing equation for a mass spring system is this one right here. This is our rectangular pulse. We have a force that is equal to F sub zero for time greater than zero and less than capital T. And then we have zero for time greater than capital T. We can convert our rectangular pulse in a step function that goes to infinity and that will be valid only for times less than capital T. But when we have times greater than capital T, then we can add a negative delay step function and that will cancel out this part of the step function and I will give me a zero function. So these two functions will be equivalent to the original function. For time greater than zero and less than t, the response will be f sub zero times the response of a unitary step function. We already know what is the response of a step function, therefore my response for this period of time before capital T will be this function right here. For time greater than capital T, then we have our function and we have to subtract this delayed step function. So we will have the original step function minus the delayed step function. That will give me this expression, which is the same as this one, minus another step function that is delayed this time capital T. And this will be our response for times greater than capital T. In this example, we want to find the response to a triangular pulse load for a mass spring system. We have our governing equation, is this one right here, mass and acceleration plus Spring, constant of the spring and displacement equals to the force. The force will be a ramp for t less than capital T and zero for t greater than capital T. We have to find a combination of functions that we know the response to have an equivalent function. So for zero to capital T, we can say that this function is equivalent to have a ramp that goes to infinity. We know the response to a ramp function. But then after capital T, we have a function that actually does not exist. So we have to subtract this part of the function. To do that, we can subtract a ramp that will take out part of the function, but we still have left a step function. So we have to subtract a delayed step function to have an equivalent function as the original one. Once we have found the combination of function that give me an equivalent function as the original one, then we can find the response. For time greater than zero and less than capital P, my response will just be equals to the response of as ramp which slope is equal to f sub zero over t. For t greater than capital T, then we have to subtract the step function and we have to subtract the ramp. And that will give me this response right here. And since I know the response of a ramp, I just 
input the response of a run, input the response of a delayed step, and input the response of a delayed ramp. Doing a little bit of algebra, we can manipulate this function and we get the final response of the system for time greater than my capital T. We did this example using the convolution integral. Please review the result and check that we got exactly the same solution. In this example, we want to find the response of a damp system to a composite force. The force is composed by a impulse that happens at t, t sub 1, and then I have a rectangular pulse that is between t2 and t3. This is the piecewise function, and then we can decompose this force by superposition as we have the same impulse, then we have a step function, and we subtract another step function in t3. Once we have an equivalent function, we can find the response by superposition. Since we know the response for an impulse and we know the response for an unitary step function, we can say that the response of the system will be zero for time less than t1 because nothing has happened yet between t1 and t2 we can say that we have the response of that impulse. For time greater than t2, we have to take into consideration this impulse, and we have to take into consideration this step function as well. Therefore, the solution is the adding the impulse and the step function. And for time greater than t3, we have to take into consideration response for the impulse, the response for the first step function minus the response for the third step function. And we can substitute this function by those one right here, and we have to include the time delayed in each of the cases when it corresponds. The next example is to find the response of this damp system to a discomposite force. As you see, we can write this function as a piece one function where we have zero force for t less than capital T, and then we have a linear function, then we have a constant function, and then we have a, also a linear function that is negative. And then after 40, we got zero force. If we want to use the superposition method, we want to find functions which we know the response, to have an equivalent function as the original one. As you see, we can write here that from t to 2t, we have a ramp. But from 2t to 3t, we want a step function. So we will subtract this ramp, and then we get a constant force because we were able to subtract this piece of the function. When we arrive to 3t, we want to decrease our function linearly. So we subtract another ramp of the same slope. But now when we get to 4t, we want 0 as the value of the function. Therefore, we will add a ramp that will contrarest the ramp that is going down. So finally, I have converted my original function in a composite function of ramps. I know the response of each of these ramps, which is this one right here. Therefore, it's very easy to find the response of the system. For t less than capital T, my response will be 0. Between t and 2t, I have the response of a ramp that is delayed at time equals to capital T. Between 2t and 3t, I have two ramps. Between 3t and 4t, I have three ramps. And for time greater than 4t, I have to include the four ramps that are shown in the figure. The function for each of these ramps would be this one right here, 
but I have to include the offset of time for each of these runs when they start.